Hello there. So we're going to wrap this up. We're going to mat the inside covers and maybe a little more matting, who knows. But we are just so close to being done with this album. And I have to say, it has turned out so pretty. It is one of my most unique albums. Nothing, nothing, none of my albums come close to this. And I'm so excited. I love creating different things. Makes me happy, guys. By the way, this is Kathy with Paper Phenomenon. Thank you for joining me. All right, so I'm still working with the Ladies Who Lunch paper collection. This is available to you all in both a digital and a hard copy. Matting. We're matting inside the pocket, so you want to measure from wherever you want to start your pattern paper uh, to show into the pocket at about a quarter of an inch. You can go a half inch if you want, quarter inch, good. All good, all right? But you definitely want to go inside that pocket. Why do you want to go inside the pocket? Why, why you say? I'm gonna tell you why. Because you want to cover or go over the flaps, the flaps that are, that attach the pocket to the cover. All right, so you want to go over that. All right, you want to cover those. That way, when you put something inside the pocket, they don't get caught on those flaps. Although this is a really large pocket, so that shouldn't happen. But you know, that's the objective here. That's what you want to do. So that paper goes there. Now we want to measure the pocket out. Measure. Uh, you always want to mat a quarter of an inch smaller than the, than the actual surface that you're measuring. All right, so I measured my pocket. Now I am cutting. I'm using my Tim Holtz trimmer, which I absolutely love. Still love it, still love it. And so there's not too much blue in this paper. Normally, uh, if I was working on a layout, I probably would have chose some more yellow, but like I have a lot of blue here, so I'm gonna try to pick up on that blue right here in the hummingbirds. And then I chose this paper, so I'm gonna cut in this area where you see most of the blue. Okay, and then I will mat. And I forgot to measure this out. Okay. Right, and that will go there, and that is perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to come uh, around to the back and do the same thing. So here there is no blue black back here. There's a lot of pink, yellow. So I think I'm going to go in with this paper that I used down here for up here. I already know my measurement because I cut it already in the front cover. Remember, you always want to measure a quarter of an inch inside of the pocket and that is your matting size that's the size you can cut you should cut your paper I like to uh, start uh, slightly above my binding system I like an eighth of an inch around the perimeter to peek through that's it see that beautiful black border that's about an eighth of an inch then I'm going to grab some complementary papers and see what I like. And I like this very much. I also like lots of the gray that's showing here. So I like this. So I'm going to try this. Same size, or I should say same width. See how my paper is getting caught on the, uh, the flaps? That's why you want to mat on the inside of the pocket. So important. Absolutely important. 
All right, so we have no yellow here. No yellow, we've got lots of yellow there. We have no blue up here. So you want to use something that is more neutral. So let's audition a few pieces of paper, shall we? I love this. We also have this piece here that we used over here. We've got a small print here, small print here. So I'd rather use that. Let's see what's on the back. This looks great. This also looks good, but I'm going to stick with this. And this complements what I have going on over here. All right, let's see. We also, and it complements the black in that area there. So it looks good. Looks very, very good. So that's what we're going to go with. I am inking with Vintage Photo in the Distress Oxide. All right, so inking this up. We're going to mat. Look how beautiful that looks. Oh, so good. So, so nice. Very, very put together. Even with all of these patterns that we have going on, it looks so good together. All right. So let's glue this down. All right. Did I also tell you that we're going to have a moving parts two that's in the shop? Also, we're going to do something different with moving parts too. I'm going to couple that with the one sheet show off, right? One sheet show off. So we're going to have some transitions in this page, which is going to make the book even more interactive. So if you want to participate in that, you want to get moving parts two and the one sheet show off if you don't have it yet. When I'm matting inside of a pocket, I like to put my glue around the perimeter, not here. Okay. Sorry, on three sides of the of the pattern paper, not around the perimeter. The reason for that is, especially if you're using glue, if you're using tape, you can do it on all four sides. For glue, when you press down, when you burnish with your hands, you may, that glue may ooze out into the pocket and it will seal your pocket. So I don't like to put glue down there. All right, so three sides for the glue and that's it. And now this side, when I'm doing a belly band, I only like to put glue, also three sides, and I treat the left and the right hand side as, as if they were two independent pieces of paper. I don't put any glue in this area because if you put glue all over the paper inserted into the belly band, it may stick down prematurely and you'll find yourself with a mess. So again, I speak from experience, all right? When I say these things to you, it's because it happens. I'm not taking these wild guesses here. So treat these two sides as individual pieces of paper, add the glue, and you will avoid some heartache. All right, so now matting this, glue around the perimeter. Why do I put glue only around the perimeter of the paper? In most cases, that's to avoid warping of the paper. Okay. Warping. I hate warping. I know we all hate it. So in order to avoid it, I do glue around the perimeter. I also hold my glue bottle in a very specific way. Now let's ink very quickly here and then I'll show you how I hold my glue bottle. Okay. All right. So let's ink this piece up. And now this piece, uh, you can use a fine tip liner to apply your glue that will also avoid the warping. I personally just do not like the fine tip uh, points for my glue because if I'm covering a large area with glue, that by the time that fine tip, it releases the glue all the way around, it's dry where I start it. So I don't like that. So I'd rather use the regular tip and manipulate it. All right, so let's one more piece for inking and then we will apply the glue and I will give some instruction. And listen, if you try it, I think you may like it. Okay, you may like it. All right, so I've got that. So I hold my glue straight up and down onto the paper and I scrape the glue with the tip as I go along. 
kind of spread it. All right. I don't create a bead of glue. It's just kind of like a scrape of glue, if that makes sense. And I'll show you the difference on a back piece on a black piece of paper. And that way you get enough glue, but not a bead where you get a ton of oozing and warping on your paper. Okay. So let me demo on a black piece of paper so you can see. So when you hold your glue like this, like this, you create a bead and you see the dimension, right? I'm going to use the same pressure. When you hold your glue straight up and down, it's flat because you're scraping the glue across. Do you see the difference? Same pressure, guys. I, I promise you, same pressure. Bead. See the difference? Scrape. And you can even go back for a better scrape if you want to. So you have a much flatter surface here. So straight up and down gives you a scrape of glue. That's the best way I can describe it. If it's on a slant, you get a bead. No bead, my friends. All right. So try it. You may like it. All right. So let's insert our paper first into a belly band. First. Remember, we're treating, the, we're treating this as two independent sections. We're doing glue on three sides. Again, we're scraping that glue on there. No bead. If you think you get a bead, you want to burnish, but you want to burnish toward the inside to avoid uh, oozing or to minimize the oozing. Okay, very minimal oozing. If you go this way, it comes out. So there's the the glue and I'm scraping, right? Scraping, scraping, scraping with my tip. In, 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 to avoid oozing or to reduce the oozing, all right? Because you really can't avoid it all the time. But you know, you want to you wanna aim for no oozing is what you want to do. Do you hear how my glue scrapes the paper? I'm not sure if the camera picks that up, all right? With a fine tip for me personally, I can't, I can't make it work guys. It's too much work, too much pressing down on the glue and I just don't like it. But for those of you who love the fine tip, absolutely use it. Not, not telling you to change that this is the right way. This is just the way I do it. All right. And you guys have to find what works for you. Okay. Hopefully it, this will help. All right. So what's next? We're going to mat right inside these two pieces, these two areas here. I normally like to leave this unmatted when I'm doing my final review so you guys can see the pivoting action of the binding system. But I think, I think you guys have seen that. We're going to mat right in here, right in there, and then we'll be done with that. I'm going to cut my paper and we will get it going. So when I'm matting in here, it depends on the look I'm going for. I either want something to give me a clear defining separation of the pages, or I want something to give me a good blend or flow. And in this case, I would like the pages to flow because I'm working with double page layouts, right? So no clear defining separation here for me. So here I'm going to see if I can still use this paper that's got pattern everywhere and you don't know whether it's coming or going. So um, I really like the way this is looking. No separation here. So look at that. That's perfect. All right. So I'm going to continue going. I will be speeding up the process while I'm done with this and I will come back and we will chit chat.
All right, my friends, when you map these two areas here, it is absolutely important that you let them dry in this position like this. You want to close your book. I'm missing a few closures here, so just hang on. Close your book. Give it a quick little bang because you want your binding system to dry flush to the spine. All right. Although it's attached to the spine, if your album, when you're using wet glue, it tends to take on a shape, you know, it tends to take on whatever shape it's in, right? So if this is, you know, a little wobbly over here, if it's not perfectly flush, it will dry like that. It will dry however the, the cardstock is positioned. We don't want that, right? We want it to dry perfectly flat because when the glue dries, it gets things stiff and that's what you want. So I have let this dry. I'm going to let this dry just like this. I use these giant clips that I got on Amazon. Uh, these will be linked in the description box below if you want to try them out. Uh, and they work beautifully. They work beautifully. All right. I love them. Look how big this album is. And I can put this giant clip on this and let this dry. I give it a few hours before I open it again. And uh, we'll add some closures. So guess what? I'll be back with another video.